Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is our pleasure and our honor to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. So excited about what we are going to talk about on today. You know, as we grow in our walk with Christ and if you are one that has been sent I'm talking to those that have been sent to do a work to assist God in a work so you know one of my favorite books I talk about it every now and then is experiencing God and experiencing God is a book that I highly recommend for anybody to get let me grab it it's so close to me <laughs> let me grab it off of my bookshelf experiencing God by Henry and Richard Blackaby along with Claude King very very good book very very good tool to have in your personal library especially if you have experienced being sent to do a work for God and in the book it begins to talk about invitations uh, God sees a need in an area and he has a selection he looks for a willing and obedient vessel to go on these assignments now yes we do have individuals your assignment might go to you know within your network of ministries you might get invited to you know anniversary ministering opportunities revivals things of that nature then you have individuals who are sent to ministries to be a part of that ministry to you know to go a lot of prophets uh, are sent intercessors evangelists those are the fivefold ministry uh, apostles are definitely sent to establish to grow ministries then you have individuals who they go on foreign ministries you even you might have individuals who have to relocate when they accept an invitation from God in certain demographic areas regions what have you and what I want to talk about today is something that those who are sent must grasp this understanding this assignment is beyond you this assignment is really not about you yes it's a time for us to learn and grow it definitely is we are going to face trials and tribulations but it's not about you it's really not I'm not gonna put this book back on my bookshelf because I think I need to tap back into it and I like to just go through it sometimes and, and reread and be refreshed and be renewed as I currently am. And I want to help many of us along the way because when we are sent, and, and I can add myself to the we because I accepted an invitation from God in which I relocated I am originally from Florida and uh, 2019 I accepted an invitation from God to come to New Jersey and that is where I have been the assistant pastor for the past four years May was my fourth year being here as an assistant pastor but it started long before that um, 2018 uh, uh, beginning of the year began to assist my parents Apostle Naaman and Valerie Wilson with their ministry and all uh, they had a a a conference call line in which we did Bible study on Mondays so that's how that portion I mean I had been their uh, secretary for years for ministry and personal but stepping into the role of teaching in their ministry uh, early 2018 
And then on the latter part of 2018, I came to New Jersey for three months while they were in Africa to fill in for them fully for that time period. And then we transition over to 2019 and getting the invitation for the assistant pastoral ship where I currently am. What I have learned, <laughs> this assignment is not about me. I get the bunt, I get the hits, I get the knocks from it, but it's not about me. Whenever God decides to fulfill a need in an area, once again, he looks for an individual, a vessel, an obedient vessel that he can send, but it's never about that person. We get there and we look at what we go through and it's really not an opportunity. It's not a time for the woe is me. I know that that is not what we want to hear, but it is a reality. And oftentimes I am reminded by my spiritual sister, my co-laborer in the work of the Lord, about when I talk about making my own plans and what I want to do when she just simply laughs and say when you gonna get tired of telling God what you want to do <laughs> and recently taking a look at some things um, I am learning that more and more let me tell you I'm really learning that more and more that my assignment here it don't have nothing to do with me. I get the... Because intercession means you intercede. And so you get the hits. You get the knocks. You get... Because you're interceding. And, and you are there. And so you feel a lot of what's going on. But it's really not about you. And so my prayer life has definitely shifted. That whenever someone asks me to do something I am learning now that instead of me praying or if they ask me to pray about something instead of me praying about specifically what they're asking me to pray about I am now praying that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide them into prayer and how to pray for it and so it's not about me it's not about me um, I'm here on an assignment it's it's affecting me but it's not about me and so instead of shifting instead of taking on um, things I am here to guide by the Holy Spirit I'm here to intercede I'm here to teach to do whatever it is that God will have me to do while I'm here and when I get to that reality, it's not about me. Do you not know I can sleep better? Do you not know I'm more relaxed? The pressure is not on me. If we can gain that understanding, it's not about me. So yes, we go through trials and tribulations. And yesterday, we shared a word for our television ministry. And it is on our YouTube channel, Living the Word what that really means we have to stand on the word but what and, and listen like I said may has been four years that really really resonated with me on this past week where I listened to the Holy Spirit and I'm like oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute I don't need to pray about this because it's not necessarily my problem. Mm -mm, it's not my problem. What I need to do is I need to pray that the individual's eyes are open and that they will be receptive of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding them on what it is that they need to, they need to be praying about. And so it totally took me out of the equation. And so there was this cloud of pressure that was trying to sit on me. And when I allowed the Holy Spirit to open that up to me, 
that cloud of pressure lifted and I saw God move miraculously when we get an understanding that you know what it's not about me let me get out of the way let me get out of the way let me do what God wants to do I'm sent here as a help and so I think it's so important that we understand our assignment know the call that's on our life know the vessel that we are mm -hmm. know the vessel that you are so that when we get to these places we do not lose focus of why we are there that we take into consideration that God wants to do a work and a lot of times that work cannot be done because we are in the way but we are in the way because we don't understand the vessel that we are and we take on the conception that it's all about us why am I being affected? Why am I being attacked? Why, 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 why? Ain't got nothing to do with you. Intercession means to intercept. That's what that means. And so I'm looking at the Word of God. And I'm over in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. And I am looking at Elijah the prophet. This is at the time that he fled after the release of rain, after the killing of the false prophets, and he flees. This is during the time that God tells Elijah the prophet, let me back up because I went ahead of his story. Ver chapter 17 is about when God tells Elijah to say that there's not going to be any rain upon the earth. Okay. And he tells him the time frame. And then he sends him to a place. He first sends him to a brook. And he nourishes him there. And after a certain time, the brook dries up. And God tells him to get up. And go on away and he has prepared, he's commanded a widow woman to sustain him. Okay. There was a need. There was a desire and a want in the life of this very same widow woman. Something she didn't share with anybody. God sent him there saying that I have commanded this widow woman to sustain you. But what was actually in God's plan is to meet her desire the need that she had so let's take a look at that first Kings 17 and 8 says and the word of the Lord came unto him saying arise give thee in Zephyrath which belongeth to Zidon and dwell there behold I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee so he arose and went to Zaphirath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise and behold I am gathered to gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die hmm. and Elijah said unto her fear not go and do as thou hast said but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and thy son for thus saith the Lord God of Israel the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord re sendeth rain upon the earth and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days 
and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah so God sent him there saying that I have sent you to a place and I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee getting there with that in mind but when he gets there she actually has a need it was the assignment was beyond Elijah remember the brook was dried up God wanted to take care of his servant he sent him to a place where there was actually a need it had nothing to do with him nothing to do with him at all God wanted to supply her need God wanted to fulfill something in her he wanted to fulfill the need if you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Before I forget, before I go any further, let me say we did do our virtual writing workshop on Saturday. We shared here with our radio broadcast, and the video for that virtual writing workshop is up and playing on our page for our publishing division, and that is on WTI Productions. Uh, I enjoyed it. Awesome, awesome time. Looking forward to sharing more content for publishing. If you are into self-publishing or uh, just wanting to extend your entrepreneurship, we will definitely share more with you with that. All right, let's get back to the word. It's important to find out and to know that when we are selected, chosen, called, it's not about us. And and so God will create a situation at times that we need to go. Mm -hmm. That a place could be closed off to us. And we got to go somewhere else. But he sends us specifically to a place. He makes no mistakes. He knows where we need to be. Because he knows what he wants to do in that instance. God knows. And so in this instance, there was a greater need. God put Elijah in a position. He sustained him. He, he, he sustained him. He did. He put him in a position that says, now I need you to go somewhere else. I've, I have sustained you here, but I need you to go over here. And I have already set up the person that I want you to connect with. And when he gets there, what he finds is this woman is in a great need. That's what God does. We may have a mindset, oh, I'm going here and we might think it's going to be peaches and cream we might think that oh especially when it's ministry if we don't have all the details up front we can assume oh this is where i'm going to go and flourish no you're going there to work you're you are going there because god ha god wants to do something miraculous in that place that's what god wants to do but we have to recognize this. We have to realize this very thing. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not. And so let's be transparent here. Going through some things. Going through some bumps and bruises. And yes, I have sat on the side of the bed and said, Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that hurt. That hit. I did and the what he just opened up to me this past week it's not the first time but see I kept missing it I, I'm being transparent with you I kept missing it because I literally was praying as if it was all about me and it's not about me I love the way God corrects us that he chastises us, that he rebukes us, he reproves us, all for the sake of righteousness, 
all that we are doing his will so that it is done on earth as it is in heaven that it had nothing to do with me yes I'm affected but it don't have nothing to do with me it was a part of my assignment and I thank God for that so once I allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me and he led me in the area of prayer and he opened my eyes he enlightened me to the truth he allowed me to see and I heard and I began to pray as I was led and when I did that oh my goodness let me tell you something the pressure the weight and let, let me back up let me back up because earlier that day a word dropped in my spirit and so I opened my Bible and I went to that word and I was able to find myself in that word so that's where it started that day I found myself in the word I did and then as the day went on as night came and and something came up I, I'm like oh that's why you gave me that word this morning because you know what was ahead but see I was able to find myself in the word and as the Holy Spirit was dealing with me I came to the reality of guess what this ain't got nothing to do with angel sometimes we put ourselves into a fight and in a battle and it's not ours mm -hmm. sometimes we take on situations and 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 we put ourselves in a spiritual warfare and the spiritual warfare ain't got nothing to do with us especially when you are sent on an assignment so that's why I said that your assignment it's beyond you it is definitely beyond us so take yourself out of the equation stop taking it so personal stop looking at it as oh woe is me the enemy's attacking me 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 ain't got nothing to do with you nothing at all nothing at all has nothing to do with you at all you are on an assignment and that's it as long as we get that, we'll be okay. So let's look even further. Because once again, this was way beyond the prophet. He was on an assignment. The first part of the assignment was concerning the need. Okay? There's another part of the assignment. Verse 17 says, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman the mistress of the house fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him and she said unto elijah what have i to do with thee O thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I adjourn, sojourn by slaying her son? So this part of the Simon, let me say this right here before I go any further. We are not going to know all of the components of the assignment up front. We're not. God knows. And he will release it to us as needed. And so we might have one understanding of why we are there. But it's beyond you. It's, it's beyond our comprehension. And as long as we are led and guided by God. 
He knows what is needed. And as long as we are willing, obedient vessels, following after righteousness, following the will of God, allowing the Holy Spirit of God to be done, allowing Him to lead us and guide us, God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will can be done. But are we going to know all of the assignment up front? No. That's why we have to stay in prayer. That's why we have to stay in the word. That's why we can't afford to take on the self-complex and, and think it's all about us. It's an assignment. It's work. And you didn't go to fit in. <laughs> You didn't go to fit in and, and to be comfortable, to be complacent, to get an eye complex. You didn't go in um, to sit on a pedestal. No, you went to work. And that's what it takes. It's work. Are you going to have times of being tired? Are you going to hit moments of frustration? Yes, you are. But don't lose focus. Get into your secret closet and pray. Ask periodically, and I do so quite often. I ask, am I where I'm supposed to be in this assignment? Am I doing what he called me to do? Am I fulfilling his will, his purpose? Did I get sidetracked? Because guess what? Sometimes I do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do. But to God be the glory for his grace and mercy, for his tender loving kindness towards us, that he will come and he will correct us and he will remind us, you want an assignment. Assignments are meant to be comfortable. And you didn't go to fit in. You went to work. And when we get comfortable and when we get complacent, he will come and he will shake us up that we are uncomfortable to remind us why we are there because remember those who are crying out for help he's answering their prayer and if they keep praying okay God gonna shake you up didn't I send you if you are intercessor you can't afford to get complacent and comfortable that's not the call that's on your life. Many are crying out. And we are assigned to different things and in different areas. Mm hmm Yep. There are some that are assigned to bind spirits of attacks against our children certain things it could be drugs it could be molestation it could be rape it could be murder it could be alcohol it could be prostitution some are assigned to our governments mm -hmm. some are assigned concerning poverty mm -hmm. some are assigned to the corrupt to the wicked to the witchcraft some are and so we have to know our areas of assignment Meaning we have to know the call that's on our life. I have a clear understanding. The call upon my life is to build. Ex establish. To expand. To teach about foundation. Mm -hmm. That's the call on my life. I understand that. And I am learning more and more. It's not about me. Mm -mm. It ain't about me. Nope, not at all. I am an intercessor. So I intercede. And a part of that is teaching. Mm -hmm. So let us stay focused. Remember, it's not about you. We're going to go even further tomorrow because I want to address and touch some things concerning prayer. Mm -hmm. Yep. How we teach prayer. I'm not teaching you what to pray. Teaching you directing to pray. Pray. A stronghold cannot be moved if it's not identified. 
If you don't know what it is, you can't pray about it. We'll be back tomorrow. I love you without measure. Have a blessed day, everyone.